Brought to you by wikivd.com. Brook Shields. Brooke Krista Shields is an American actress, model, and former child star. She was initially a child model and gained critical acclaim at age 12 for her leading role in Louis Malley's film Pretty Baby, in which she played a child prostitute in New Orleans at the turn of the 20th century. The role garnered Shields widespread notoriety and she continued to model into her late teenage years and starred in several dramas in the 1980s, including The Blue Lagoon and Franco Zeffirella's Endless Love. In 1983, Shields suspended her career as a model to attend Princeton University, where she graduated with a bachelor's degree in Romance Languages. In the 1990s Shields returned to acting and appeared in minor roles in films. She starred in the titular role of the sitcom Suddenly Susan, which ran for four seasons between 1996 and 2000. Shields has made appearances in other television shows including That 70s Show and Lipstick Jungle all also starring in the animation film Under Wraps alongside Matthew Lillard and Drake Bell. She also worked alongside Bell again in the animated films Adventure Planet an A Monstrous Holiday. In August 2017 Brooke Shields was enlisted to assume a major recurring role in Law and Order Special Victims Unit starting in season 19 of the long-running dramatic series on the NBC television network. Early Life Shields was born in Manhattan. She was the daughter of Terry and Frank Shields, a businessman. Through her father's side she has Italian, French, Irish and English roots along with high social position and relations to nobility. According to research by William Adams Ria Tweezner published in 1995, Brooke Shields has ancestral links with a number of noble families from Italy in particular from Genoa and Rome. These are namely the Gattolusi, Paleolo Gossavoy. Grimaldi, Imperially, Carafa, Doria, Doria Pamphili Landi, Chigi Albani, and Torlonia dynasties. Her paternal grandmother was the Italian princess Donna Marina Torlonia. Shields' mother was of German, English, Scots, Irish, and Welsh descent. Shields was raised in the Roman Catholic faith. When Terry announced that she was pregnant, Frank's family paid her a sum to terminate the pregnancy. Terry took the money, but violated the agreement and gave birth to their daughter whom they named Brooke. Frank married Terry but they were divorced when Brooke was five months old. She has two stepbrothers and three half-sisters. When Shields was only five days old, her mother openly stated she wanted her to be active in show business. S.H.E.'s the most beautiful child and I'm going to help her with her career. Growing up, Shields took piano ballet and riding lessons for her confirmation in the Roman Catholic Church. At age 10 she took the name Camille. While attending high school she resided in Haworth, Bergen County, New Jersey across the George Washington Bridge from Manhattan. Shields has stated that her very first encounter with the paparazzi was in the Grand Ballroom of the Waldorf Astoria, New York at the age of 12, stating that she stood like a statue wondering why they were all hired to photograph me, and that she debuted at the Waldorf. Education Shields attended the New Lincoln School until 8th grade. She graduated from the Dwight Englewood School in Englewood, New Jersey in 1983. She moved to a dorm at Princeton University to pursue her bachelor's degree in French literature, where she graduated in 1987. At Princeton she spoke openly about her sexuality and virginity. Shields was a member of the Princeton Triangle Club and the Cap and Gown Club. Her autobiography, On Your Own, was published in 1985. 
Her 1987 senior thesis was titled, The Initiation, From Innocence, to Experience, The Pre-Adolescent, Adolescent Journey in the Films of Louis Mal, Pretty Baby, and Lacombe Lucien. Shortly after Shields graduated from college, her four-year transcript was published in the July 1987 edition of Life magazine. Based on that transcript, the New York Times published a light-hearted op-ed piece intended to tweak the claim that Princeton produced superior well-rounded graduates, noting that Shields got all as and B's and obviously paid attention to her school work. It claimed she got cheated because Princeton did not require her to take any classical studies medieval or modern or American history nor any course in mathematics, philosophy, economics, political science, world literature or science with laboratory experience. I f that adds up to a liberal arts education from a place like Princeton. There is no longer any danger that our society will ever suffer from elitism in any form concluded the piece. Early work Shields began her career as a model when she was 11 months old in 1966. Her first job was for ivory soap when she was shot by Francesco Scavolo. She continued as a successful child model, with model agent Eileen Ford who in her Lifetime Network biography stated that she started her church children's division just for Shields. In 1978 when she was 12 years old, Shields played a child prostitute in the controversial film Pretty Baby. Eileen Ford, founder of the Ford Modeling Agency said of Brooke Shields, she is a professional child and unique. She looks like an adult and thinks like one. In 1980, the 14-year-old Shields was the youngest fashion model ever to appear on the cover of Vogue. Later that same year Shields appeared in controversial print and TV ads for Calvin Klein jeans. The TV ad included her saying the famous tagline You want to know what comes between me and my Calvins? Nothing. Brooke Shields ads would help catapult Klein's career to super designer status. From 1981 to 1983 Shields, her mother photographer Gary Gross, Playboy Press and the New York City courts were involved in litigation over the rights to some photographs her mother had signed away to the photographer which were originally intended to appear in a book titled Sugar and Spice to be published by Playboy Press. The courts ruled in favor of the photographer but, due to a strange twist in New York law, it would have been otherwise had Brooke Shields been considered a child performer rather than a model. By the age of 16, Shields had became one of the most recognizable faces in the United States because of her dual career as a provocative fashion model and child actress. Time magazine reported in its February 9, 1981 cover story that her day rate as a model was $10,000. In 1983, Shields appeared on the cover of the September issue of Paris Vogue, the October and November issues of American Vogue and the December edition of Italian Vogue. During that period Shields became a regular at New York City's nightclub Studio 54. In 2009, a picture of a naked Brooke Shields taken when she was 10 and included in a work by Richard Prince. Spiritual America created a row. It was removed from an exhibition at the Tate Modern after a warning from the police. Film Shields' first major film role was as a lead actress in Louis Malley's Pretty Baby a movie in which she played a child named Violet who lived in a brothel. She was only 12 years old when the film was released, and controversy regarding child pornography arose. This was followed by a slightly less controversial and less notable film Wonder Nevada. After two decades of movies, her best-known films are still arguably The Blue Lagoon, 
which included nude scenes between teenage lovers on a tropical island and Endless Love. The MPAA initially rated Endless Love with an X rating. The film was re-edited to earn an R rating. She won the People's Choice Award in the category of Favorite Young Performer in four consecutive years from 1981 to 1984. In 1998 she played a lesbian Lily in The Misadventures of Margaret. In 2001 Lifetime aired the film What Makes a Family starring Shields and Cherry Jones in a true story of a lesbian couple who fought the adoption laws of Florida. Television appearances Shields began her television career at an early age. In 1980 she was the youngest guest star to ever appear on The Muppet Show in which she and The Muppets put on their own version of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. She was also the youngest person to host ABC's Fridays, a Saturday Night Live-like sketch comedy show in 1981. In one episode of the popular comedy sitcom Friends, Shields played Joey Stalker. This role led directly to her being cast in the NBC sitcom Suddenly Susan in which she starred from 1996 until 2000, and which earned a People's Choice Award in the category of Favorite Female Performer in a New Television Series for her in 1997 and two Golden Globe nominations. In the early 1980s, she starred in the U.S. PHS PSA sponsored by the American Lung Association as an initiative that VIPs should become examples and advocates of non-smoking. In the mid-1980s Brooke began her support of the USO by touring with Bob Hope. Shields made a couple of guest appearances on that 70s show. She played Pam Burkhart, Jackie's mother who later was briefly involved with Donna's father. Shields left that 70s show when her character was written out. Shields recorded the narration for the Sony BMG recording of the Runaway Bunny, a concerto for violin orchestra and reader by Glenn Rovan. It was performed by the Royal Philharmonic and Itai Shapira in the late 2000s. Shields guest starred on shows like FX's Nip, Tuck, and CBS Two and a Half Men. In 2005, Shields appeared in a season 2 episode of HBOS Entourage entitled Blue Balls Lagoon. In 2007, she made a guest appearance on Disney's Hannah Montana playing Susan Stewart Miley and Jackson's mother who died in 2004. In 2008 she returned in the primetime drama Lipstick Jungle. The series ended a year later. In 2010 and 2012, she made guest appearances on The Middle as the mother of a brood of terror-inducing children and the nemesis of Frankie Heck. She also appeared as a featured celebrity in NBC's genealogy documentary reality series. Who Do You Think You Are? where it was revealed that through her father's ancestry, she is the distant cousin of King Louis XIV of France and thus a descendant of both St. Louis and Henry IV of France. Starting in 2013, Shields has been an occasional guest co-host in the 9 o'clock hour of today on NBC. Theatre Shields has appeared in several Broadway theatre productions, including the musicals Grease as Betty Rizzo the 19th 1998 revival of Carberet, the 2003 revival of Wonderful Town and Chicago. She also performed in Chicago in London's West End. She took over the role of Morticia Adams in the Broadway musical The Adams Family on June 28, 2011. Personal Life in the June 2009 issue of Health magazine Shields related that she lost her virginity at age 22 to actor Dean Kane while they were dating at Princeton. She said it would have occurred earlier had she had a better self-image.
In the 1990s, Shields promoted physical fitness as an extension of femininity maintaining that femininity and athletics are compatible, although she was not the only woman doing so. Shields had what was required to promote women's athletics. Shields is also a well-known vegan, and an animal rights activist. However, despite coming out against the fur industry in 1989, Shields later went on to create her own mink fur coat at Copenhagen Fur. She came under the scrutiny of animal rights organizations such as Peter for this visit, which prompted media attention. Shields has been married twice. From 1997 to 1999 she was married to professional tennis player Andre Agassi. The couple had been together since 1993. Following her divorce from Agassi she married television writer Chris Onshi in 2001. After they had met through mutual friends in 1999, the couple has two daughters and reside in Manhattan, New York City. She is a spokeswoman for Tupperware's Chain of Confidence Smart Girls campaign, a program that teaches girls to nurture their mental and physical well-being. Postpartum Depression between April and May 2005 Shields spoke to magazines and appeared on The Oprah Winfrey Show to publicize her battle with postpartum depression and experience that included depression, thoughts of suicide and inability to respond to her baby's needs and delayed maternal bonding. The illness may have been triggered by a traumatic childbirth. The death of her father three weeks earlier stress from in vitro fertilization a miscarriage and a family history of depression as well as the hormones and life changes which were brought on by childbirth. Her book Down Came the Rain discusses her experience contributing to a greater public awareness of postpartum depression. In May 2005 Tom Cruise, an actor, and Scientologist whose beliefs frown upon psychiatry condemned Brooke both personally and professionally for both using and speaking in favor of the antidepressant drug Paxil. As Cruz said here as a woman and I care about Brooke Shields because I think she is an incredibly talented woman you look at and think, where has her career gone? Shields responded that Cruz's statements about antidepressants were irresponsible and dangerous. She said that he should stick to fighting aliens and let mothers decide the best way to treat postpartum depression. The actress responded to a further attack by Cruz in an essay War of Words published in the New York Times on July 1, 2005 in which she made an individual case for the medication and said in a strange way, It was comforting to me when my obstetrician told me that my feelings of extreme despair and my suicidal thoughts were directly tied to a biochemical shift in my body. Once we admit that postpartum is a serious medical condition, then the treatment becomes more available and socially acceptable. With a doctor's care I have, since tapered off the medication but without it, I wouldn't have become the loving parent I am today. On August 31, 2006 according to usatoday.com, Cruz privately apologized to Shields for the incident. Shields accepted Cruz's apology, which she said was heartfelt. Three months later in November 2, 2006 she and her husband attended the wedding of Cruz and Katie Holmes. Relationship with Michael Jackson On July 7, 2009 Shields spoke at the memorial service for Michael Jackson. She stated in that speech that she first met Jackson when she was 13 years old, and the two instantly became friends. Shields said, in her eulogy she shared anecdotes, including an occasion in which she was his date for one of Elizabeth Taylor's weddings, and the pair sneaked into Taylor's room to get the first look at her dress only, to discover Taylor asleep in the bed. 
Shields gave a tearful speech referring to the many memories she and Jackson shared and briefly joked about his famous sequin glove. She also mentioned Jackson's favorite song Smiled by Charlie Chaplin, which was later sung in the memorial service by Jermaine Jackson. New York Times columnist Gail Collins wrote that it was a little peculiar hearing Brooke Shields' weepy testimony about her deep friendship with Jackson given the fact that she told reporters that the last time she saw him was at Elizabeth Taylor's eighth wedding in 1991. Jackson stated in his 1993 interview with Oprah Winfrey that he was dating Shields at the time. Shields has stated that Jackson asked her to marry him numerous times and to adopt a child together. In a conversation with Rabbi Shmuley Botich in 2001, Jackson said of Shields, Brought to you by wikivd.com Would you like to know more?